Uh, right, we're going to talk about things that have a non-uniform distribution of their density. So this is a juggling club. Now, as you can probably imagine, the mass is mostly up at one end of it. It's up in the, the orange end here. Um, they are off balance. That's what we're going to be dealing with today. Now, I've put another club here. Ignore the dead plant behind it. It's resting on a stool, and then one end of it is under the table. So it's it's got a reaction force from the table pushing down, and it's got a reaction force from the stool pushing up on it. It's in equilibrium, it's not moving, so the total force up and down is equal, and we know that the moments are equal. Now, I'm gonna do a bit of a picture of it here. So here's the club, table pushing down with some reaction force, um, and let's talk through some of the numbers. The overall uh, length of it is 50 centimeters. I've put it into meters. Um, and the overhang on the stool is 20 centimetres, so 0 0.2 metres, that's how much of it's overhanging. Uh, we've got some reaction force R that we don't know, but I have told you what the reaction force of the stool pushing up is. It's 17.15 newtons, and I've also told you how heavy the club is. Now, I'm going to have a go at actually doing the maths on this in a minute to work out what this distance X is here, which is the distance from the bottom of the club to the center of its mass. It's gonna be somewhere over this end. And then I'm gonna work out the reaction force here. You might want to pause the video and have a go at it first. Okay, let's work out the maths. Um, firstly, this is a mass, not a weight. So if you grab a calculator, 1.5 times 9.8 is, let's put it as a decimal, 14.7. So that there is 14.7 newtons going down. Now, I don't know what R is, so I'm gonna pivot around this point. This is usually a good tactic. So we've got one force, which is X times 14.7 going one way. So X times 14.7 is 14.7 X. And we know that that moment, which is clockwise, must be equal to the total moment going the other way, which would be 17.15 so 17.15 times by whatever the distance from the pivot to the stool is. Well, if you know that's 0 0.2 and the whole thing is 0 0.5, then 0 0.3 is what's left. Doing some rearranging, well, we could do that times that, but divided by the 14.7. So 17.5 times 0 0.3 divided by 14.7, and it's come out as that number there. So about 0 0.35 x equals 0 0.357, I'm just going to round it, and that there is in meters. Sanity check, well it's over the, um, the distance to the stool, it's about 35, 36 centimeters rather than this is 30 centimeters, that sounds about right. Okay, well the other thing we can work out is R, we know that the total force up and the total force down has to have to be equal, well the total force up is 17.15 newtons, the total force down is 14.7 newtons, and so R must be what you add to this to get to this. And so calculation-wise, 17.15 minus 14.7, and we get uh, 2.45. So 2.45 newtons, and that's what R is. These are pretty much the same as questions you were doing yesterday. It's just everything involved in them is something non-uniform. Now, sometimes they're going to give a context, so something like a shovel where most of the weight is up at one end, whereas the, the, the long wooden handle probably weighs less. Um, but a lot of them are just, here's some sort of rod with a non-uniform distribution. All it adds in is one extra variable where you have to worry about what's the distance. After that, it's just algebra. Cool.